Hi, my name is Alfredo Echeverria, and I'm the president and co-founder of the World Institute of Sustainable Gastronomy in Costa Rica. And thank you very much to UNED for the invitation to share what is happening here in Costa Rica to our friends here in Savonia, Finland. Hi, Finland. And also to our friends in, in, in paradise, Costa Rica, um, from the UNED. Um, thank you very, very, very much. But today the, the subject is service design and product development. And actually, I'm not trying to go over the components or the parts of the service design and product development um, philosophy and, and, and details. Actually, what I'm trying to do, and I will do, is to tell you a story that you can apply to the concept of service design and product development. So we're gonna go through the story, the process, and actually the application to the subject at hand, taking this story as an example, so you can use it in your class, because this story, I will say is a unique story. So that's my expectation. And we have about an hour to share this information. So let's move on. Well, this story, will be divided in what I call the case of Costa Rica and starting with the National Plan of Sustainable and Healthy Gastronomy, which then provoked the creation of the Gastronomy Foundation and then the World Institute of Sustainable Gastronomy and then a pilot plan that we just started as a matter of fact last week. So let's get into the the matter. The sign thinking process, as you can see, has various steps. And as I said, we're going to take some of these steps and go through the experience. So let's say that the main product and service design uh, objective is customer satisfaction. That you know. And you know also that product and service are two different um, parts of the concept, which product, it can be tangible and service is intangible. But let's, let's, let's put it in, 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 in perspective. Uh, and this is an excellent example. What is service product design? Well, it says here that when you have two coffee shops, one next to each other, and each of these coffee shops have the exact same coffee at the exact same price, and then service design is what makes you walk into one and not the other. That is a very smart um, statement, but it reflects what it is, the outcome of service design, which is this differentiation. But then the question will be how to apply this to a, to a country? Well, co the country, the country is Costa Rica. And we have been known for those, for these characteristics that you are, or values that you're showing, you see and we're showing with, in the screen innovation, excellence, social progress, and sustainability. Well, it's a position well-deserved. And I have some percentages here to, to share with you. 6% of total biodiversity in the world. And six or 5%, you might say, no? But it has the highest percent of total biodiversity by square meter in the world. This is amazing. We have 25% of total land protected. We have 
zero army. And we have more than 95% literacy in the country. So with those credentials, um, <clears throat> well, the, with those credentials, we have a powerful message. But then how do you apply it to a country? But it's a matter of scales, no? Because a country is a product and it's experienced by people, local visitors, local and local, local and international visitors uh, are the clients. So the service is the experience and the country is actually the product. So let's put this into context. When we're talking about Costa Rica and its brand, uh, we thought that there was a missing ingredient in the recipe. And at that time, I am, I'm talking about around 2010, uh, it was gastronomy. And gastronomy, uh, because we were comparing ourselves with an emerging world that had an almost complete recipe. And I'm said complete because they had already gastronomy in it. As opposed to a country, meaning Costa Rica, that actually we did not believe in our gastronomy. We did not value what we had. Obviously, those were challenges to overcome. So let's go to the need. So the need that we perceive was to build an integrated, integrated country brand. And our vision was to actually include gastronomy in the recipe. And when we're talking about gastronomy in a country recipe, we're talking about gastro diplomacy. You might, uh, you might have heard the, this concept, or you might not. Well, gastro diplomacy is a, is a concept that uh, started to be used in, in South Asia. And then other countries started using it like Peru, for example. But it, it's basically is when a country uses food part of their efforts to promote their cultures. And therefore build their images, globalize their food industries, attract foreign tourists and build relations with foreign publics. And at the same time, strengthening their national identity and pride. And this is a, a statement of this specialist. She's called Irina Gusinskaya. Um, you can find her in, uh, in LinkedIn and in other uh, internet sources. She also said that when we talk about gastro diplomacy, the actors are no longer limited to state politicians and their chefs, but include food, corporations, celebrity chefs, tourist agencies, public relations firms, public diplomacy practitioners, TV cooking shows, and social media. Meaning that the control of the, in this case, the, 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 the gastronomy diplomacy is, is no, longer, no longer only limited to a government uh, public policies. And, and Costa Rica is a very good example for it. And I will later, later get into the subject. So how, how a country really um, takes the lead into uh, diploma, di uh, the diplomacy, taking gastronomy as, as the spear point. Irina says that it has to consolidate the forces and create a powerful lobby include gastronomy in as many of the actions of the destination as possible, reinvest profits and constantly improve the quality of the experience. Interesting. But then taking, uh, it has to be taken with, with cautious because nationalist idea does not lead to anything good. And I think she's right. Also measure the results and correct the strategy respectively. I'm putting this here because, because Costa Rica did not follow this as a recipe. 
it started in an organic way. And in this, this is very interesting. We can see in the world uh, countries that have successfully placed their gastronomy together with the country image. Some of them with a more structured plan, some of them, maybe Spain, maybe France, maybe Italy, because of their culture and their influence around the world since many years ago, centuries ago. And immigrations and migrate migrations uh, took their, their, their food to other part of the world. And then came globalization and so on, so on, so on. But then countries like Costa Rica, we started to uh, understand that we needed more because we are not, let's say, a country that uh, that expands its territory or its culture through the ways these other countries, uh, through economics, through commerce, and so on, so on, did in the past. So, we have some challenges in Costa Rica, and and we we and and, and the, our friends from Costa Rica that are listening to what I'm saying might be saying yes, yes, yes. And some of these things are non, not, not, not necessarily uh, shared or discussed in public here in our country. But yes, we are a very individualistic culture. Yes, we have an inclination to foreign values. Yes, we have a tendency to undervalue our gastronomic heritage. And then, yes, uh, when we think about uh, having fun, we, we do sometimes, and many times, if we have the, the, the means, we try to go out. And well, traveling is nice, but we also can, can enjoy and discover our country, which is happening now because of uh, that's happening everywhere in the world with this pandemic. But usually the local market is looking to travel abroad. And then again, there was, there is somehow less, uh, there, there is more information more time to time, but there's a lack of information with regards to local gastronomic heritage and possibilities. We also have some challenges like the globalization of markets and the consequent threat on the homogenization of taste. I mean, everything tastes the same everywhere in the world. That is a common world problem. And also diets are shifting away from historical nutritious and indigenous food consumption to more industrialized processed food. But there are more challenges too. The current consumption patterns driven by misinformation, what I was just commenting before, and lack of knowledge concerning the nutritional value and sustainability of food products. And a major challenge on healthy diets are a major reason for health problems, environmental degradation and food biodiversity loss. As a matter of fact, Costa Rica has 1.8 child malnutrition. It has 61% of obesity and overweight in adults up to from 18 years up. That is a pandemic too. And it's something that we have to counter back. So in the year 2011, an idea came into life. And, and I call it at that time, the National Plan for Sustainable and Healthy Gastronomy. It was an idea that I had and shared with a couple of friends that uh, they were part of, uh, of the uh, gastronomic community. And then everything started. We call it the National Gastronomic Roundtable. Why national? Because well, well we, we thought that everybody should be involved. Why gastronomy? Because it's the common denominator and the, and the matter. Why round? Because we wanted no heads, no hierarchies, no politics. Why table? Because table is a place to nurture, to eat, to it's where your family enjoys, and table is fun. So, what we, which, which was the process for the creation of this idea? It uh, it was a consequence of uh, of an structured process. Well, 
It was a consequence of 25 years of experience, the visualization of a need when comparing Costa Rica to other countries. I lived abroad. I study in, 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 and work in many countries. And then I saw Costa Rica and I said, well, there's something missing there. It was just an idea. So was a result of a country strategy? Answer is no. It was a shared idea coming from civil society and that developed an organic process until 2014, because in 2011, we gathered, we decided to move forward and then the group started to expand and in 2014, actually this is a more recent photo, but many of the ones uh, that we are here, uh, we were there in that, in that uh, historic meeting because we uh, gather about more than a, a close to a hundred specialists from, from uh, historians, uh, sociologists, uh, managers, chefs, and you know, you, you have to understand one thing. Uh, Costa Rica is not a big country. And we, we, nah, we know each other, you know, it's, it's not easy. It is easy to, to, to contact and uh, to call somebody, even in a, at, at a government level, you can call and they will answer most of the time. In other words, we are not a big country like Mexico with a very complex society, which states that in itself, each of them is a country. So for us, I mean, this is a strategic advantage that we are learning now how to use it. So as a consequence, as a consequence of that meeting, we developed 12 axes. This is in Spanish, just to show you in a fast track uh, how it looked like, but in English, it will be this. So we concluded that uh, these 12 strategic axes should have been needed to be part of the core of our movement. As you can see, it's very complex. What we didn't know at that time, and when I presented the plan at the beginning, I didn't know that actually we were really making history because if you know what is happening in September in New York, the United Nations is, is, is meeting in a very important meeting. It's a summit for, for what now it's called the food systems. So actually what we were looking at here is that we were talking about the food system because the plan sees gastronomy as, a, as an axis that, uh, that, that goes across all uh, society. Uh, activities. As you can see here, for example, conservation of resources of nutritional importance, and there you go. Sustainable food production, health, safety, re revitalization of gastronomic heritage, gourmet product, quality and innovation, tourism and gastronomy, marketing change, climate, climate change and carbon neutrality, generation of knowledge dissemination, training and professional of the human capital, and there you go, until you reach communication from which is in Spanish, Plan Nacional de la Gastronomía Costarricense Sostenible is a, a very long name. But we thought that that name has to be like that because people have to understand what are we talking about. So our driver for change, where were the initiative targets, chefs to development of new authentic Costa Rican dishes based on primarily native and endemic ingredients. So we, le we learned we learn of endemic ingredients, of, of uh, naturalized ingredients, of uh, native ingredients and exotic ingredients. So that was a very interesting contribution from the um, scientific field because in our group, there were also researchers, academic and scientific professionals. So we thought that the activities of restaurants would be regulated by sustainable guidelines, important, that the production would be addressed by developing self-sustainable 
and replicable farms to provide the local ingredients. And micro businesses which produce local ingredients will provide job opportunities. So we were thinking about gastronomy as a means to the improve quality of life, quality of living, and also economic and social growth. We, that's repeated from the beginning, but the tourism sector also has a role to play. So very, very, very important. And finally, consumers are important drivers who will create the demand for the products. Actually, what we're doing now, uh, some, years, some years later, it's really motivating consumers because the change will come from consumers. Actually, that is what everything entails in service and product development is the consumer. So, so the, the, we thought that uh, we need to unite the various actors of the food system in Costa Rica, and including the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Agriculture. This is the National Apprenticeship Institute, local universities like UNED, for example, Universidad de Costa Rica, the major universities, and civil society as a whole. <clears throat> Uh, not only related to the food and drink sector, but also any community society um, group, social group, because you know food, food is, is, is extraordinary. Everybody relates to it. So we need to base ourselves in multi-sectoral and multidisciplinary approach. And it happened that we managed to include more than more than 100 stakeholders to participate in various workshops and concluded with with uh, contributions to the plan. Um, and then again, we thought that actually at uh, the beginning, a uh, mini beginning before the plan. The countries didn't really show their gastronomy from a regional standpoint, from a cultural regional standpoint. Yes, there were some differences and we appreciated those differences, but they were not really based on a, on a, on a plan to, to showcase their full potential and what they had, which, Again, because of global, globalization and, and uh, the influence of other cultural uh, factors were not really, uh, for example, providing uh, the exposition of native recipes or, or understanding their history, their composition. So, so we moved to document that. So that also means creative and new dishes. Um, based on, on, on primarily on native ingredients. And we call this, we call it the innovative innovation with identity. Why identity? Because our recommendation is that all innovation come from what we have uh, from tradition and we have local, which means there's a, there's a, there's a link to the local culture. Even if it's not already um, coming from a from a local dish that is a, a traditional dish, but if it comes from a product, from an ingredient that is cultivated in in the region, and we integrate that ingredient in in a new dish, so then we are talking about culture. That's why we define it as innovative gastronomy with identity. So <clears throat> the market of these ingredients and their components is also has been also addressed. And, and, and we have been able to influence restaurants and simulate through sustainable and replicable farms. That is happening still, it, it has been, has started, but, but it's, it's an objective that's, that we need to really get into our hands. But, but it's, it's there. 
And then markets have been stimulated by the demand and consumption of this local product. And this is more and more every time. Um, when we talk about product strategy, uh, we, in this case, we integrated more than 100 participant restaurants that able us to reach more than 100 customers, exposing them to native plants prepared in creative ways. Also, as a consequence of that, the restaurants were able to, to produce, create menus based on healthy and sustainable philosophy. There's still, there's still a lot of things to do. Uh, it's been 10 years, but you know, to change really a nation, you need to be constant. And that's what we're planning to do. And we are doing it at the right time with the help of government and other uh, institutions. As for example, UNED in this case, this, this event is, is an example of that. Uh, uh, menus were analyzed before implementation and, and, and this is very important. We're working with another organizations public, private, like for example, public culture and the nutritional department of the University of Costa Rica, which are both from the public sector. So this created a product. Talking about the, the subject at hand, which is creating products and, 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 and creative service strategies, the product has to be based on, in this case, scientific facts. And this is a book that enables us to the visibilization of local as a nutrition ingredient and as a cultural heritage value. The, when this book came into my hand, I understood that this was the platform that we need needed to create actually comprehensive recipes, intelligence recipes. Recipes with a, 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 a sense of regional. Um, so I, we can share this book. Well, it is in Spanish, but through the, we can, we can, we have it in a digital form, but it's a, it's a magic uh, book. It is called, called uh, Edible Plants of Central America. Then we knew that it, ha it had to be innovative. It had to be informal. Obvious. Had to propose a creative process. And most, most important, we should, we, 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 we had to include and, 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 and we were open to multi-stakeholder participation and active multi-sectoral involvement. Show you here how how did uh, we 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 saw this? Right now, well, I'm the president of the also of the Costa Rican Gastronomic Foundation, and the foundation is the entity that coordinates the national plan for sustainable and healthy gastronomy. There has to be somebody, in this case, it's a foundation that has to, you know, there has to be coordination in every, any project in life. So we, we oops, sorry about this, we coordinate. And this is as a, a table that we invite entities to sit down. So UNED is here, the University of UNED. And Every entity provides and contributes to the center, and, and the center is a dish in Sesc Astronomy. So everybody, meaning the health department, the tourism hospitality sector, and there we go, and there we go, okay, contributes to the table. Say it is a round table. And in this table, this politics. Power positions. We try to decide. 
So many seats in this table should be to contribute, not to, not to sit to see what is taken away. But if everybody does that, we will have a very dynamic and a very, as a matter of fact, nutritious table. So when, and this, when you put people together towards a common objective, positive, constructive, and that is talking about improving the everything in the country. So it's it's interesting and people like it. So people start to, to communicate. And when people start to communicate and understand the, the needs and also frustrations and, and challenges, we might have the same challenge. So we might see together how do we, do we resolve the challenge. But again and again, you see, um, not only Costa Rica, because I, I understand, I live in many countries, but I understand that that happens in different places. We tend to work isolated from the others. We tend to work thing, which is actually stopping us to grow. So it's not intelligent to do that. Because when you sit down with other people and you talk to other people and you share your thoughts, your ideas, then this happens. You start to def define, you have to, you, you start to learn and, and to identify people that can help you. And, and then you can help other people. And then so projects can uh, really foster. And it, this is exponential. So everybody works, okay? So this, this, is, this is happening. As a consequence of this, of 2015, and as you see, we're going, we're moving along the line of time. In 2015, this was um, declared by presidential decree of national interest. This helped us to move on and work with other agencies and entities. And as a result of that, uh, then we were able to promote sustainable health and gastronomy business models. Then the inclusion of Costa Rican gastronomy in private and public hospitality and culinary educational programs. Because before 2011, we did not have in our culinary programs the Costa Rican culinary heritage study. So the something magical started to happen. We energized a national regional tourist product. This differentiation is based on local gastronomy. Now it's a movement. I mean, let's say, uh, let's say this. Um, this is a universal movement. I mean, this is not because we did this. Costa Rica is changing. Now, Costa Rica is changing for many reasons. For the influence through through the TV and digitalized information, but 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 this was needed to really put the things on the top of the table to discuss it more clearly is the most important facts of this, I call it revolution. And each country has this, you know, each country has its phytogenetic resources, but if we don't uh, recognize them, if we don't identify them and then include them in the mainstream, well, they might be, kept aside and especially in Costa Rica, we have a mega diverse country in our, I mean, the, the highest percentage of, of plants and, and animals per square meter in the world is something uh, that really, we have to take advantage of that. So, food producers closer to the gastronomic sector by shortening market commercialization chains. Uh, also the society awareness towards sustainable, innovative and healthy gastronomy um, was reinforced. We were able to, to, to go with ICT. I'm in the one, I'm here, here, we know, no bear, no, 
of them now. We have managed to influence communities for its market. The, the Ministry of Tourism programs, food festival, gastronomic routes, culinary labs, as I mentioned, and also influ influence some private and public food canteens. But then we were able to join a movement that is called Scaling Up Nutrition. You can look at it into the internet. And and this is working towards the eradication of malnutrition in Costa Rica. I mean, scaling of nutrition is in the world. It works with the United Nations and it's for more, for more than 60 years. As a matter of fact, we are 63 now, the, the movement. No? We tied it in to the sustainable development goals. I started saying this morning that September in New York, the, the, the summit is happening. Well, it has to do with this. It has to do with the sustainable development goals, which is, are included in the United Nations agenda for the 2030 uh, objectives, meaning that we want to mitigate the, the impact of, 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 of uh, global warming. And uh, well, with this initiative and seeing from the social perspective, we managed to, to really influence and hit and, and help in several of these objectives. Which are they? Well, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well being, quality education, gender equality, decent work and economic growth, reduce inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production climate action, life below water and life on land. As a consequence of that, and as you can see, and we were when we talk about a product and service and then product and then service, this is an ongoing process. And in, in, in the end of the product, we are sharing co-working, co stakeholders in order to continue the improvement of this product. In 2017, the foundation then uh, was born because we needed we needed an entity, a neutral identity to really work this, what I call tools, because the, the plan is a tool to improve the quality of living in Costa Rica in all directions. Well, the people in Finland maybe can see something familiar here. In 2019, I traveled to Stockholm and spent there two extraordinary days in the EAT, which is the Global Food Forum. And for two days, I had an, uh, uh, I had a, very interesting uh, uh, communication and sharing uh, many key players in the world. Well, as a consequence of also and, and the work we have done, as you can see along the years, here starting to 2011, 2020, all these organizations have joined forces around the table. All of them are seated in the table and actually working very closely. And they were represented also in the EAT in, in Stockholm. This was 2019. And there you can see, we, uh, let me go to the back. Here you have, here we have the representation of Costa Rica. Then we uh, work with people in, from Bolivia, from uh, different, different parts of the world, from South Africa and uh, the, the Nordic Kitchen Manifesto from, this is the founder of the new Nordic food movement. So we now are in the streamline. We were talking about the power of gastronomy to democratize healthy food with planetary boundaries. 
as I was saying, Sweden was an extraordinary experience. And you can see here, all these brains working in a very concentrated mood, talking about the power of gastronomy to democratize healthy food within planetary boundaries. Amazing. So I was able to share this group. And well, we were able to, coming from Sweden, this was, this was 2019. And in 2020, this pandemic came up and we continue working, uh, same as the whole world, you know, working from home and trying to continue uh, contacting and, and building the network. And another idea, but this time it came from, um, this is a private initiative, but it is a consequence of all these various series of events. And in my case, well, I've been involved very much in the process, as you can see, and it was natural to move to the next step because the foundation, it is a public, is an, is a, is an ONG, is a non-governmental organization, but we needed something to really put ideas into practice, not only conceptualize, not only motivate, not only inspire, but to act. So this is when the World Institute of Sustainable Gastronomy comes into life. And it's been a year of carpentry and working and it opened last week. So I could say that, I can say that we are celebrating with you today. The, the, the World Institute of Sustainable Gastronomy well, it's the first institute of its class directed to three pillars, research, development, and education pertaining to sustainable gastronomy. But we're looking after the, the, the food systems. And then, then and again and again, food systems comes up in, into conversation every time or more often, and it will be in the future. Wait and see the consequence of the meeting in, in September in New York, what is going to come up out of, out of that? Well, the whole world will be talking. And well, the strategic objective of the Institute is to inspire the world, but also to take action. And we have a strategic advantage. We are in Costa Rica, in the middle of the Americas. We are a pioneer country of, and, and, and at the forefront of sustainability movement. Mm -hmm. And we're very close to San Jose, 60 kilometers from the international airport. So everything was ideal. Also, we are working with hotels. As a matter of fact, we are, <clears throat> the campus is in a hotel in the middle of the forest and in a gorgeous place that the name in itself is gorgeous. It's called the Silent of the Angels. Can you imagine to be working in a place like this? Well, we have integrated obviously the foundation. We are a member of the National Plan for Sustainable and, 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 and Healthy Gastronomy in Costa Rica. So we are, but uh, I'm, and what I'm trying to point out here is that in spite that this is a private uh, a business or a private um, initiative, it is linked to the conversation along the years of the country conversation towards uh, a country that everybody, and this is what we're looking at, schools, high schools, farms, commerce, industry, everybody has to be under the umbrella of sustainability and health. 
That's why we are inspired by the National Plan for Sustainable Health Gastronomy. So we have the stakeholders, we have international, local stakeholders, including, ah, let me go back to this. Look at here, Nordic Council of Ministries. We are reaching them, we have been talking to them. And I, actually in 2022, because 2021 is the, we're building the platform for the, for the Institute. And the venues, well, here is the place we, where we are now, right now. It's an extraordinary place in an extraordinary region. Those are casitas, little homes, little houses. They're actually, they are guest rooms that you can see here. As a matter of fact, it's such like a very Nordic feeling, no? The wood and all that. And it's in the cloud forest, so you see the fire there. So sometimes it's, we can reach to a certain... So this is the facilities. We have even the church. This is some representation of the local culture. And this is leading to something else, okay? This, those are the hotels that are related to the concept, which is a sustainable hotel. As a matter of fact, they are pioneers in Costa Rica on sustainable hospitality. We have developed then programs, corporate programs, also programs directed to the foodies, to the people who like to eat and really get acquainted with uh, sustainable gastronomy. We are going to have a, a e-learning facility to, to conduct uh, uh, classes from uh, far away and close and there in the field. So you can, you can start studying abroad and then you can come for another, for, for maybe a couple of weeks and then final, finalize your program. We're gonna have uh, uh, kitchens like this. And as a result of that, same day last week of the launching of the Institute, we launched a pilot plan for the community of San Ramon, which is a county that has 90,000 people living there. So we have been able to organize with the local community, with the local government, with the local entities representation of agriculture, health, academics, and civil society and producers. And next week we have the first meeting to move forward. So with this presentation, uh, I wanted to share with you what had happened in Costa Rica that not necessarily had come out of a structure, uh, service, product, strategy, uh, but it has the components. So you can take this and you can go back to your classrooms and you can then understand, as I am understanding right now, looking into retrospective way, how did we managed to do this. And what is most important is what we have in the future, because actually by doing this presentation, I'm revising ideas. I am going back to the, to the table, to the design table. And I am using many of these principles to, to, to look to the future in a more structured, in a more organized, and then maybe I will say to achieve a more, um, to be more effective as a matter of fact. So this is my presentation. And I really thank uh, UNED for, for sharing, for providing me the opportunity to share this with you. 
to Costa Rica and to Finland. And I, I wish you uh, an extraordinary career. Uh, tourism is very exciting. It's not necessarily, um, I would say, but let's put this posit positively. It has many challenges and it will become challenging. And therefore you have to really um, study and you have to, and I know you're doing that, but to look at the future with, uh, uh, I would say a positive view because there are many opportunities there. So I wish you success and thank you very much. And if you have any question, please, you can do it through universities. I will be able to, to answer and willing to answer with absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.